This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So, having gone through and looked at the definitions of the elements within the financial statement, so assets and liabilities, let's just stick with those for now. And also, having gone through and looked at the recognition and de recognition criteria, we now come in and start looking at measurements as defined under the conceptual framework. Why is measurement important? Well, we're preparing a set of financial statements. Those financial statements, if we focus on the SFP and the assets and liabilities, are reporting financial information, numerical information, quantitative information to the users of the accounts. So we need to ensure that that quantitative information, those numbers that you see on the face and within the notes, meet the definitions of our measurement bases. We can't just pick and choose uh, any old number that we want to recognize. We have to have fundamental criteria that define how we measure an asset and a liability. Why? Let's go back. Okay, we went back to the recognition criteria. That was all about faithful representation, about it being relevant. Well, remember within there, that was mentioning your faithful representation about measurement uncertainty. Uh, relevance was all about materiality. So we need to make sure, don't we, that we have a strong measurement basis to be able to go through and put appropriate numbers within the values of our assets and liabilities. Again, then the standards can use these to be a little bit more specific with regards to their measurements. The standards are now so specific that when you look at is it your current value there on the right hand side, we now actually have a standard that talks about fair value, IFRS. 13. Okay, so that is used in a specific measurement basis, fair value, to develop an accounting standard because fair value is prevalent in so many accounting standards. It needed a separate accounting standard and the framework itself was just not enough. So, what have we got? Uh, well, the first one that you've got there is your historical cost. Uh, so, that's basically looking at what you paid to initially buy the asset. Uh, or the initial amounts that you owe when it comes to settling the liability. So if we go through that uh, and think about your historical cost. Uh, with a very brief illustration to show how it works. So you've got your asset, it costs... Is it $200,000? And that was there on the 1st of January. Is it there X1? Uh, so that is its historic cost. Uh, the life, let's just say that is 10 years. That then means, doesn't it, that the depreciation is $20,000 per annum. So on a historic cost basis, the carrying value, let's just say there on the 31st, we'll make it interesting, 31st of December, X2. That's two years worth of depreciation at 20,000 per annum. Cumulatively, is 40 which gives me a carrying value of 160,000, isn't it? The after is that two years. All of X1, all of X2. And that's how you measure that asset based upon it an historical cost. Yeah, you go through that and look at the price that you paid initially to enter into that transaction. We then also have. Uh, what's referred to as your current value. So current value is now saying, well, look, historical cost is quite accurate, but it can be quite long ago that that asset was purchased. What has happened currently? It may have changed in value as an economic resource, as a financial resource. There might have been some changes that give rise to maybe increases or decreases in the value of that asset. So we're going through that and we're trying to reflect the conditions at the measurement date, so to give it a more up-to-date value. So what you've got there is you've got fair value. Uh, fair value uh, is the price that you would receive on selling 
an asset or the amount that you would have to pay today to extinguish that obligation. OK, so what you've got there effectively is going through there, isn't it? And, and looking at an, an, an exit price. OK, uh, so IFRS 13, as I said, you can look at IFRS 13 in the standards and the notes later. But that's what you have there where you see more of the detail to do. Is it there with your fair value? So what we've got there is that we're saying, look, you've got an historical cost, is it, of 160 at the 31st of December 20x2. That was two years ago. You know, if we're going through there and look at the fair value, uh, it could be that the fair value today is, what should we say? Should we say that? 180,000. If, if that's the case, that is what you would then go through and show on the statement of financial position. If you decide to measure your asset at fair value, so going back to the revaluation of property, plant, and equipment, uh, you revalue the asset to fair value. So here, if we were being specific, that would have to be a non-specialized item of property, plant and equipment. So we'll see a little bit more detail about that. But just a general item of property, plant and equipment that is not specialized in nature, you can revalue it to fair value. Fair value being the amount that you would receive if you were to sell that asset today in its current condition. OK. Uh, so what you've also then got as well, and we'll skip the middle one, uh, you've then got there your current cost. OK, so we've spoken about fair value. Uh, what about your current cost? Well, your current cost is effectively going through there and saying, how much could we buy that asset for now? OK. So we spoke about the fair value being an exit value. So we can put that in. OK, so if you were to dispose of that asset or distinguish that liability, you're exiting from that contract. The current cost effectively is looking at it from an entry value perspective. So usually, maybe if you have some specialized property plant and equipment because if it's specialized there's no active market there's no active market it's difficult to get a fair value isn't it so what you go through and do is look at what it will cost today so let's just say that asset that we had before previously that it cost two hundred thousand and january x1 just double check there we go january x1 it cost two hundred thousand uh, based upon current cost let's just say now that the cost to buy that specialised asset would be 250000 on the 31st of December X2. But that's it, if you like, as new, isn't it? This asset that we've got here is two years old. So what would a two-year-old asset be worth at current cost? Well, the life we know was there as 10 years. Uh, so if that was the case, the depreciation that we would have charged would be $25,000 per annum. So therefore, the carrying value now, and again, remember, there's two years worth of depreciation. We originally bought the asset in January X1. Its current cost today, December X2, so two years on from when it was originally bought, uh, is 250. If we were to have depreciated that for two years, that will be 50,000 of depreciation in total. And its carrying value would be 200,000 on the 31st of December 20x2 and it's that amount there that would appear on the SFP under your current cost okay so current cost it's at 200 
Is it their fair value? We just made up a number and said it's 180. Uh, your historical cost, it's there. Is it at 160? Uh, what we've then got as well uh, is to look at your value in use. Uh, so your fair value is an exit value. Your current cost is an entry value. Uh, your value in use is also an exit value. Exit because you're using the asset and therefore consuming the benefit. So you're exiting effectively from its use. Okay. The same value in use for an asset is called fulfillment value with regards to a liability. Okay. Uh, and effectively, when you're looking at value in use or your fulfillment value, that's whereby we use your discounting. Okay. So your valuing use here is effectively looking at the present value of the future cash flows. Okay. So here, let's just say from that asset that we own, or control, I should say, uh, you may own it, that does give you control, uh, but you can recognize an asset if you don't own it, if you do control it. We'll see that in leases later. Uh, but uh, this is why the framework's so good. Uh, but what you've got here, let's just say uh, that you've got some cash flows at $28,000 per annum for, is it, bom, 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 eight years. Again, there is some measurement uncertainty, wouldn't there, in terms of the length of time, also the discount factors. So let's just say here that we have a 5% discount rate. But the framework is giving you the baseline idea as to how to calculate it. Okay, It can then be defined in more detail within the actual accounting standards themselves. Uh, so what you've got there, if you have a 5% discount rate, is it there for eight years? Uh, what that then means is that your annuity factor from 1 to 8 at 5% is 6.463. Don't start asking me where you got that number from. You do it on your calculator. Okay, If you're not sure how to do it, go back to management accounting. Okay, This is financial reporting. You'll always be given discount factors and annuity factors within your exam. So fear not. Yeah, Just take it. Uh, eight year annuity fact that 5% is 6.463. Okay. Uh, so, therefore, what you then have is the present value is 28,000 multiplied by 6.463. If you tap that on your calculator, I think that gives you, is it 180969? So, effectively, 181,000, the value in use in your asset, if that's the way that you measure it, uh, is what would appear on the statement of financial position. Okay. Don't worry about where the changes in the value go. Did that scare you? Made you jump. Uh, don't worry so much about where those changes in value go just yet. We'll see that all within the next video.